folks, I'm Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. I have to say, every culture has its weird things. The 80s were weird. Um, I'm not, I'm glad I wasn't around in the 60s for this swinging cat jive. I like this. I, I like the theme of this. I mean, the first thing that came in my head, and I'll have to, since I sing bad enough, we won't get a copyright violation, but... You gotta jump and jive in, <laughs> then you will. You gotta jump and jive in, then you will. The benefits of not having talent. <laughs> Yay! Okay, but anyhow, this game has a, has a it, it's certainly a unique theme. This is done, the company here is called, uh, there's a new company name, I keep forgetting, Daily Magic, which is really Clever Mojo. Remember Clever Mojo? They did Alien Frontiers. Um, and then they were got up by Game Sleuth. They had some input on nothing personal. Now they're their own. This box is big, but that's because it needs to fit in these glasses. Why would you need these in a game? I'll show you. There are different people that you are trying to influence at this party. Each person has a cup with 15 of their markers in it. And you're going to be placing these markers on the board. You'll start with a couple of them already on the board. If you ever have all 15 on the board, you have to remove five. But other than that, most of the time when you place them on the board, they're going to stay on the board. Uh, only one person can influence one of these people at a time. So you'll notice that there's different people out here to influence. And these white ones are the ones that, the ones in white are going to be the ones that you're starting on. Others will give you points. If you ever can influence uh, one of the people, one of the twos or the tens, you'll notice uh, up here in the corner, this ten here has a star around it. That means if you influence that person, you get a point. If you can influence these jive cats here, this requires a special card to do that, you will get points. And as you get points, there are one point monkeys and five point monkeys and you will take them and simply hang them on your cup to show how many points you have. So players are going to be playing cards. Now you're gonna have four cards and you can play all these cards on your turn. You don't have to. Each card can be played to influence somebody or it can be played to cast a spell. Uh, when you're done playing the card, you discard it. At the end of your turn, you can discard any extra cards you have if you want to and then draw back up to four for your next turn. Now, influencing someone's pretty simple. When I influence somebody, this here is a six, I can influence someone who's a six on the board. But I have to be adjacent to them. So if I'm here, their spotlights of these two people are adjacent, so I can influence that six. Uh, perhaps I want to influence a six, and I don't have that six card, but I could always play this eight and two. Eight minus two is six. I'm giving them two drinks. Some people require more. And I could even, I could, I, you, you can kind of do any combo you want. I might uh, want to do a two, and these are the th four three cards. So I say six plus four minus eight is two. You'll notice each card has a recipe on it. If you, this does not have anything to do with the game. This is if you actually want to um, make these drinks. They're all in the different cards. So anyhow, players are going to be playing these cards for that, but players can also play them for the special abilities. When you play a card for special ability, you're going to have to use the different voodoo symbols that you might have. So if you don't have enough of these, you can't spend them, but you can spend these voodoo symbols. This one here is a zombie card. You can place this card in front of you, and in the future you can spend a symbol to tap it, and then you can basically use the four. You can use it by itself to influence a new person on the board, or you can add or subtract it from another number. We also have these guys here. These guys are the radas. Basically, when I put this in front of me, anytime somebody else wants to use this number, so this one's a two, then they have to pay me a skull to be able to use it. Then we have the voodoo spell itself. This basically gets rid of someone else's zombie or gets rid of their rata card, so you can spend it for that. Or you can get rid of someone's token on the board, even one of your own, if you need to clear one off. Then we have the... Uh, this here is the shovel or the chevel. You can only do this once per turn, but this lets you take a token you have on the board and move it two spots to a new space. And then we have this here, which lets you influence the jive cat. To influence a jive cat, let's say I want to influence this one here, I would need to have 
I you to influence a jive cat. I would to put it there. I need to take off two tokens that are in two other lounges. You'll notice the board is split into four different lounges. So really, that's what you're doing on your turn. You're also going to be watching to see if you have completed one of these. If I play, for example, a six in the brown lounge or the red lounge, then this card is discarded and I get two of the voodoo symbols. If I play a two in the green lounge or the red lounge, I'll get three voodoo symbols. And when these are discarded, um, all these cards move down and a new card is added. Over on this side, we have trends. And you keep an eye on these trends. So for example, if I have a chip on these sci-fi heroes and aliens, all four of them, I take this card, which would give me an instant two points. It also gives me a special ability to pay a skull to change a click's card number up or down by one. This one here, I need to have chips on five or more starter lounge lizards, the ones with white. If I do that, I get this card, which would give me one immediate point. The card here would give me two immediate points. And this says if I have one skull or less at the start of my turn, I take two. So this is a way to get more. And I can keep these cards and use their abilities once per turn as long as I'm still meeting this qualification. If you ever don't meet the qualification, you don't lose the card, but you turn it sideways unless you get it again. At the end of the game, you will get one point for each of those cards that you have that you still meet the qualifications for. This, is, this continues on. Players are going to be playing cards, using chips, slowly spreading across the board. There are these portals here, which if you are next to one of these portals, you can pay a skull to go through that portal and come out another portal. There's also a few spots on the board. These are called staff spots where you, can, you can't place those. Those are used in a two or three player game to add extra places to the board. Anyhow, as soon as someone has 15 or more monkey points, that person is, the well, the, the game ends. You will add any extra monkey points that you have for any of these trend cards that you have in place. And whoever has the most points is the winner. And then there's some tiebreakers. I don't drink, so it doesn't matter to me that every card in this game has a drink mix on it. But do you think anyone has ever gone, oh my? No, I thought it was kind of cool. I have to say, <laughs> like, the f even though I'm not a big drinker, I mean, I drink once in a while, but the fact that every card was an actual drink and had the actual recipe for the actual drink was kind of cool. Well, let me ask you this, because I don't know anything about drinking. What does a monkey have to do with drinking? Absolutely nothing. Oh. Absolutely nothing. Is it some sort of... Uh, but I will say, the visual effect of having your pieces in these cups is pretty cool. And having the monkeys hang on your cup, yes, that makes this box big. Yes, it's totally unnecessary. But it's cool. It's cool. It is. Very cool. I mean, I just felt cool. Like, <laughs> I just felt cool playing this game. I. What's funny is I... When we were playing it, I looked at the cards. I'm like, oh, look, they've got real drinks on it with the real recipes. I'm like, and I figured this game was going to be pure fluff. Like, there was going to be no game to the game because it was basically recipes of stuff. But the game is actually a pretty good, I guess, area control-ish game. All right. Well, here we might disagree some. Okay. The game is an area control game, obviously. There's a couple problems with the game. Um, first of all, visually stunning, like how everything looks. Some of the cards will say, find these four guys, and if you have something on those four guys, you know, you finish it. And you're like, where are these guys? And you have to spend a lot of time looking for them. That's kind of that. annoying. I agree with that. Secondly, as much as I love those bonus cards, it's kind of dumb when you're playing a tight game and you flip over a bonus card and it's like, oh, I've already done that one. Exactly. <laughs> and it's just blind luck that you happen to do it or whatever. Um, I do like the bonuses in general. I like the fact, go for them. And I like that some of the bonuses give you benefits. I like the fact that the different spots you put things um, will give you points sometimes. But more often than not, they're just ways to get to points. Yeah. Um, the flow of like moving your stuff across the board is really good. But the biggest problem I have with the game is it's too long for what it is. Five players is too many, first of all. I'll never play this with five players again. Um, four is, is good. Three is probably the sweet spot for it. Yeah. Because this game of five is 90 minutes with four, probably 70. With three, I, I think you can cut it down to 45 minutes. And that's, the, that's what this game should be. Yeah, yeah. Especially with five players, you can do something like, ooh, I'll put a zombie in front of me and I can do something cool with that. There's four other players who might blow that up. Blow it up before you go, yeah. I mean, it, it had kind of that same feel that you're talking about 
Um, I kind of overlooked some of that because I just got into the theme a lot. And I usually don't get into themes. That's true. I got into the theme of this game. I don't know why, like, the whole you're spreading your people around this bar and you're trying to, like, go to the cool part of the bar and be on the be in like the cool VIP section and then which you actually are anti that in real life yeah but I just thought I, I don't know why it just the theme really fit in this game and it Jason and it was helped. cool in this game it was cool we were like cool swingers you know going around and uh, and lounging it up I, I don't understand the whole get rid of some of your friends and turn them into these monkeys I mean no no no, no you're like you're like saying oh, whatever I don't need you anymore I'm going to go hang out with this person you got to sacrifice friends to hang out with the cool hang out with the cool with the coolest ones but um, <laughs> no it 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 had some flaws but overall it was a decent area control game um, I agree with you about the randomness I don't think that the randomness is well there's one more problem I have with the game is that you play your entire hand on your turn that's yes. cool but it does slow the game down. I was like, oh, are you done yet? Well, wait. I can add the four and the two together to make a six. Or I can play this one for the special ability. And since you can play your whole hand, you're just kind of like, all right, move it. So, again, that brings it to me. This is a three, a two or three player game. Yeah. Um, more than that. So, I like it. But I don't love it because I think they added a player that they didn't need to add. And because when you're playing those bigger player games, it's so chaotic. By the time it's your turn again, who knows what happened? See, I, I didn't feel it was too chaotic. You know, I sort of planned my turns and said, I've got this number and this number. I'm going to do this. If someone took it, then I'm like, oh, I'll do that instead. But you can plan enough that it didn't feel super long between the turns. But maybe that's just me and the way I think. Well, anyway, what's your awesomeness rating here? This one, I'd say it's a uh, six. I'm going to give this one a six also because even though I do have some problems with it, I think the three-player game is pretty good um, and the pieces are astoundingly good and functional with the only exception finding those people on the board. A um, lot of cool concepts here. I don't understand all the concepts, but maybe I'm just not hip enough for that. Certainly, I applaud this I forgot the name of the company. Daily Magic, I applaud them for trying something new, right? It's, it doesn't feel like every other game. I mean, I sang Brian Setzer. Now I'm thinking, you know. You said Brian Setzer. I said Brian Setzer. But now let's talk about it. It's all band the Stray Cats. You know, if you want to, like, rock this town, you'll enjoy the theme. <laughs> That's Swinging Jive Cat Voodoo Lounge. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.